Welcome to Still Untitled, the Adam Savage Project. I'm Will. I'm Adam. And I'm Norm. Hey, guys. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Is it, though? No. No, no. it's not. Things are really, really, uh, things are really messed up. Um, <clears throat> things are in turmoil. Uh, our country is on a curfew, on a, not only in a pandemic lockdown, but every major city seems to be under a curfew. Police seem to be instigating the violence among uh, protests across the country. It's really intense, man. D -d 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 my bingo card, uh, I ran out of items for the bingo card weeks ago. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, it's if, well, obviously, if people, if people don't know what we're talking about, then I guess you don't watch the news at all. But um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, people started pro uh, a, guy, a man named George Floyd was murdered by cops in Milwaukee a week ago now a little bit more than a week ago and a Monday last week yeah yeah and um, that started a wave of protests that turned into what seemed from everything I saw to be almost almost universally un like a in my eyes there's not a lot of excuse ever for police violence against citizens whether they're violent, you know, peaceful protesters, whether somebody hucks a water bottle into a crowd of cops or not, I, like, I feel like there's not a lot of excuse for, for, you know, police violence at that point. But we haven't even seen that. Like, we're just seeing the stuff that, I, that I've seen almost universally is just unprovoked aggression. Well, and we have a control against this, which is the white protesters who were armed to the right. teeth storming state houses a couple of weeks ago and getting defended by the president and largely effectively, you know, coddled by the police. I, yeah. yeah, it is a I mean, very, very intense time. There's so many ways we can talk about this and we can obviously acknowledge that, you know, we're observing this from an outside point of view, right? Like this is not directly affecting us, but yeah. we can, you know, it's, it's, and today as we're putting out this podcast where, you know, we are hoping that this is a conversation that people are having, right? Like we all, we know yeah. that people don't tune into this show and this channel necessarily for the politics, but it's things that Obvious. affect all of us. And it, it's, it's yeah. something that we do think is worth talking about. Um, and we know we're not going to cover it all in this next half hour, 45 minutes, but you know, it's no. the first chance that the three of us had a chance that's, to share how we feel about it and hopefully yeah. that will give you listeners out there you know even if it's not what you agree with we hope it's something that you can at least think about more of and try to see a different perspective right um because that's what we're all we're trying to do we're trying to see a point of view that we don't have which is the the view of someone who's black who lives in america and who has who lives in a fundamentally life. who lives in a fundamentally different america yeah and, and i think that's what this completely different yeah, yeah. that's what I, this is all about i, I mean I, I don't i don't know if this is a thing that we, i've talked about on this podcast before but years ago i was writing with a coworker who was black and we got pulled over by the police and he started pulling his wallet out of the car and putting it on the dashboard and did put his hands on the, on the sill when the cop, and I was like, Hey, why did the cop pull you over? He's like, I had no idea. We weren't speeding. We didn't run any red lights. We didn't run a stoplight doing no, no moving violations. So I, you know, nothing happened during the, 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 the stop. Thank goodness. Um, but when we got going in, I was like, Hey, why did you do all that? Why did you do all that stuff where you took your wallet out in advance before the police officer was there? Why did you put your hand out the window when the cop was walking up to the, to the car? And he's like, Oh, that's just what, that's just what I do. That's what my dad told me to do when I was a kid. And, yeah. and it, like, I got the, the, what uh, a lot of black people I follow on Twitter call the talk from him, which is yeah. when you're a, a young black man, your parents tell you, Hey, here's how you engage with police officers. And it is, you know, the way I was taught to engage with police officers was if you need help, you go to a police officer. And that is not the experience that a large portion of our population has. Um, uh, yeah. In fact, not only are they not a source of protection, they are a constant threat uh, yeah. as, uh, yeah, as evidenced by the other thing that happened last Monday was the Central Park, uh, the Central Park uh, 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 incident between the birder uh, and the woman walking her dog. Yeah, Christian uh, Cooper. You know, Christian Cooper was threatened by Sarah Cooper. Um, no relation. Who seemed to have, 
no relation who seemed to have complete knowledge of what she was doing when she called the police and said an African-American man was threatening her life. Yeah. Um, the, again, and, and I, I think the, one of them, I mean, that's the story, obviously, that's I just want to say know. what people keep pointing out is that that's not there's nothing new about what happened between Sarah right. Cooper and Christian Cooper. There's right. nothing unique about it. It's just that it was recorded. Right. Sorry, go ahead. Right. And and I think something the people now diving deeper in that story, it's you know, it's come to light that she has she on paper is a progressive liberal. Right. And right. has you know, made donations, all sorts of progressive causes. And it didn't stop her from doing this because it's deeper than on paper what people say they are. It, it's a systemic problem. And it's like, it's something that we all have to reckon with. Well, and I mean, the big, so I, I mean, I think the constructive thing for us to do isn't to talk about how we fix police or how we fix, you know, th this, this isn't, our realm necessarily maybe you more than us adam although getting rid of qualified immunity would be great but go ahead right getting rid of qualified immunity de demilitarizing the police all good choices right maybe not Absolutely. using tear gas and pepper spray during a pandemic that's spread by coughing i don't know maybe just maybe yeah. maybe yeah maybe maybe you're right Will. um maybe maybe if you need to do crowd control don't roll out with a bunch of fucking riot armor and tanks that's you know as de as de-escalate rather than anyway um but i mean one thing we can talk about is how to be a better ally to to people and how we can help you know how we can help educate other other you know other people that are like us um and and the, the hardest part of all of it is changing like changing your pre, your your initial thoughts right you know for for years and years and years when i would see somebody pulled over on the side of the road i would think oh traffic stop white people oh that guy's probably, you know, doing something illegal. There's six cops and a black guy on the side of the road, right? And, and like, admitting that you were wrong about that stuff or that you're potentially wrong about that stuff and, admit, and, and having the courage to sit down and take out your phone and start recording a video when you see, uh, you know, a, a black man stopped by cops is, is probably the first thing to do. I mean, re reading is probably the first thing to do, but, but like, learning to know that you were wrong is, is, is hard. Like it's it's hard to challenge your preconceived notions. It's hard to break years and years of of training by the by you know everything from your elementary school teachers on up. Um, well, media. it's like looking at yeah. the, it is literally looking at the world through a different lens, a lens that makes it clear that when when you have laws written when when you have a structure built by racists, that structure is going to have uh, racist outcomes, right? Like yeah. the casual. Uh, the casual, banal, institutional racism that is so baked into our system is uh, traditionally hard for white people to see, and yet it is there for everyone else to witness. And hard to see because, you know, frankly, we all benefit from it. And right. passively, indirectly, you know, the system has worked for people who are not black. Yeah. I know. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but like we're we're all a little bit freaking out in my house. I mean, everyone is maintaining, but the last few days have brought this elevated. I mean, and the whole city feels like this. It feels like this feels like an inflection point. And, you know, inflection points are, are double edged because you, things could get much worse or this could be uh, uh, the 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 path by which we actually are really able to to reconcile our wrongs and confront the deeply deeply embedded racist history of the United States uh, on you know it's like any any inflection points are singularities right you go into them you don't know what's going to come out the other side and i i don't right. i would feel a lot better if we had um uh, more competent, any leadership empathetic <laughs> leadership Although, you know, one thing that Gina and I have been taking comfort in is the leadership, the state and local leadership. I feel like here, at least in California, Gavin Absolutely. Newsom doing a great job for the most part. Yep. Um, London Breed has, I feel like she's at least doing what she feels is right. Um, mm -hmm. And, and you know, it, it, it highlights the importance of state and local elections for these kinds of, for, for all issues, but especially for, for things that are 
of pressing local concern, right? Like, I don't want a governor who's going to say, yeah, bring, why don't you roll in with the 101st Airborne um, to, to my cities? Well, again, I mean, also, uh, 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 forward thinking local governments, uh, we now have a direct control witnessing how different local governments handled the coronavirus lockdowns and which decisions had an actual body count to them. Yeah. Yeah. It's crazy that it's all happening during a pandemic, but also, you know, it brings like that the people going out to protest are literally putting themselves not just in the harm's way of the protest, but the harm's way of the pandemic. <clears throat> And yeah. that's yeah. now a shared, you know, it's something that people previously didn't have to think about, but that just shows the gravity of it all, right? That it's, it's you know, it's worth putting our lives at re risk, even peacefully protesting, because it is something that has reached this point. And it's, you know, it's, it's nothing new, right? We've seen, you know, yeah. we, we saw it with Trayvon Martin, we saw it with, and, and, but now the hope is that, you know, once, you know, obviously we're escalating right now, we don't know where that's going to end but the conversation doesn't stop. Um, and for us who live so much on social media, I've been reckoning over the weekend, I've, you know, it's obviously seeing a lot of people that we follow in our own kind of, you know, circles and echo chambers talk about this and the feeling of like, you know, if you stay, you, know, there, you go through the, the whole thing, right? Like, okay, it's not my time to talk, but talking about it does help because I'm always surprised by how many people are not in the circle and how many people who, 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 don't, who, who fundamentally believe this doesn't matter. It's, it's shocking, right? Like posting Black Lives Matter and the number of people who respond with All Lives Matter always blows my mind. Like, it's just absolutely astounding. And yeah, I, look, if you happen to be a very small percentage who's listening to this, who disagrees with uh, us and or me politically uh, and listens to Tessa despite that, I assume it's a very small amount of the listeners. But when you say Black Lives Matter, it literally means all lives matter. If you can't understand that, you're totally not paying attention. I mean, some people are trolling. Uh, to, they're purely, they're doing yeah, to troll. Totally. Right? Um, but, you know, I, uh, so go ahead. Sorry. No, I'm, I'm trying to see, I'm trying to understand if they're not trolling, what is it about this movement that they're, that they are offended by, right? Like, can someone, do, do they just not reasonably understand the point of this? Or like, what is that perspective? I, I, um, I don't know. I mean, I, I honestly, I, I don't. I fundamentally don't understand how you can watch uh, watch a video, um, a a any of the videos of of a, a police officer, you know, murdering a, a black person, and and think, oh yeah, this is, you know, my life is this is this is about me, right? This should be about me, a white guy, <laughs> right? In, in yeah, you know, wherever, and um, it, yeah, it it just absolutely. It it shows a profound inability to listen to other human beings and pay attention to what they're saying. Like like people. Here's the the thing to remember is that people don't go out and risk their lives and 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 do this stuff. And 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 just just to be clear, if you have like Rebecca Watson, I think said this on Twitter the other day, and it was very smart. And it basically, it was like, hey, you know, people, if you're complaining about kids getting hurt at these protests by cops throwing tear gas and pepper spray at them. Then why the fuck did you bring cop your kids? Sorry, I apologize for my language. But I'm pretty pissed off. Um, why the fuck did you bring your kids to this protest where you knew there'd be cops? And the idea that that like a protest that there are going to be cops at is a dangerous place that you shouldn't bring your kids is exactly why we have to why people have to fucking protest. Like that's exactly it. Right. That like yeah. Like if you can't see that that's a problem and you can't see that cops using violence against pe peaceful citizens is a problem, then then you know. That's you, I don't know that there's any helping you and journalists and the right and, and yeah. the people there. There seem to be a very systemic, uh, <clears throat> excuse me, across the country. The police were regularly ignoring press, asserting that they were press and arresting them, manhandling them, kettling them, the whole business. I I uh, don't. Oh, that's oh. really chilling. I I mean, it's almost like. 
having the president of the United <laughs> States call the press the enemy for the last three and a half years has had a long term effect and and has had an impact on you know uh, how people around the country see uh, journalists. Well, and it's particularly pernicious at this exact time when the business model of the fourth estate is under such attack by tech and by people's desire to have everything for free. Uh, right? It's like that's one thing that's happening. And then the other is you have this direct attack uh, where the president was encouraging protesters who were threatening and attacking journalists. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, yeah. Um, I have. <laughs> we all know people who work in law enforcement. I mean, Adam, I know you work with you know, CPE. I've worked with and... many wonderful, yeah. wonderful yeah. policemen and policewomen over the years and count several as great and close friends. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and, and... this isn't about this isn't about the monolith that is, that is cops. Uh, it is it is really about st state sanctioned violence. It's about the militar's militarization. I mean, and it's, <clears throat> sorry, go ahead, Norm, finish your point. Well, and, and I know there's a lot of people saying, you know, this is, it, the example shown, right, is the, the few bad apples. And, you know, the whole phrase is the, the few rotten apples spoil the barrel, right? And that's, that's why it's unacceptable, is that it's a system where, right, there are people where it's, it's, a culture of where it's too easy to get a badge, right? Or the path to get one doesn't always mean that, you know, they understand their, their own neighborhoods or necessarily the places that they're meant to serve and protect. You're, um, you're, and, and you don't select that, the most qualified people to be cops always, right? And, uh, you know, it, it, I think specifically in New York, there's been a whole history of a problem where the, the people who are, who are cops aren't from that neighborhood. Right. Even though yeah. it's supposed to be that way, because if you're not working, you know, you don't live in the neighborhoods that you you're protecting, you, you don't understand. Yeah. Right. Then then that's all. That's part of the systemic problems that lead to this, this type of, you know, the oppression. Um, yeah, it's it's. I want to I want to I, I, I can't imagine the minds of people, who, the cops right now who will who are going out here because this is a, like we, we started this talking about the differences between the the protests for you know the pandemic right at the state houses a couple years or a couple weeks ago um and the police reaction to that being completely different and i don't think it's race absolutely a big part of it but also fundamentally this is a protest that's directly attacking at those law enforcement systems and so they feel personally attacked and that like that's going to lead them to you know in those moments feel like they have to exercise their power which is an, an awesome power even more more so yeah. um and not contend with the responsibility that comes with that um we are in our house also upping our activism we're doing some calling and some Outreach, outreach projects with different organizations. Uh, also, people can donate to bail bond relief organizations in these different cities. That's a huge thing you can do. There's yeah. tons of people being arrested, being held on bail that they can't afford, even if it's a few hundred bucks. Uh, anything you give to that will really help and <clears throat> making well, sure that everyone can vote. And if you don't have cash, then share. Tell your friends, talk to people, read. You know, one of the things, um, you know, don't, don't call your black friends and ask them what, what, what to do. <laughs> don't be like, hey, don't can you explain racism to me? That is not what, that's not going to help anybody. It's not what you need. But there, there are bazillions of good <clears throat> books. I'm happy to post some on Twitter. Um, uh, we've talked about, I think, Between the World and Me here um, uh, by Tennessee Coates two, three years ago now, probably. Um, How to Be an Anti-Racist by Ibrahim X... Uh, I can't remember his last name in true, uh, which is very on brand for me, but um, is, is what I'm reading. Like I went through and picked up all the books that have been on my shelf for uh, Abraham X. Kendi um, is fantastic. Um, but yeah, go through and read, read a lot. Read until you start to understand. Yeah. I mean, there's listening, there's engaging in your own circles, right? Even if you can't go out and physically participate, 
Um, obviously, you said there's there's donating. We'll include links. Uh, there are some great charities where it makes it super easy. If you're listening on your phone, you can like literally yeah. click one button with Apple Pay, and you know your donation gets split evenly between you know between thirty and you know of multiple different bailout funds. Um, and there's also like again, our audience are tech savvy, and we live on social media. But there's also being very cognizant of like the misinformation that's being spread around, and not getting caught up in you know, frankly, the, the gotcha culture of, of it all, because, you know, even if people are sharing things with good intentions, um, it's, it's on all of us to, to read and understand that and not just gut and, you know, retweet. Um, don't, but really, yeah. Don't put a black triangle on your Instagram today in the black lives matter hashtag. Yeah. Cause it clogs up the information feed for people who actually use the hashtag for, for, you know, protest purposes. Um, you know, um, well, and it art, is on make, all of us. Yeah, make art, as you say, Norm. It is on all of us because a lot of the social media platforms have abdicated any responsibility. Yeah. Hey, uh, shout uh, out and, to Twitter for like taking the very first baby steps in <clears throat> in watching <laughs> yes. violent speech from Republican <clears throat> politicians. Though that sounds that seems yeah like, yeah. Finally, <clears throat> excuse me. Um, yeah. No. Hey, we'll we'll take progress where we can find it. Absolutely. But but um, but. I mean, for real, make art. Go, go out and like make art and sell it. Um, uh, Gail Simone is posted uh, posted an auction yesterday of if 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 you can't if you don't have cash to send, make art and sell it and give the money to the to the to the charities responsible. Like there's there's lots of ways to contribute even if you don't have cash and can't go protest. Yeah. What what a um, um, I mean, it, it, we're in just like the the fourth day of this and. It really do, does feel bigger than, you know, the, the past instances of Black Lives Matter, you know, the protests, uh, part of it because of the, the response by the government, but also part of it because just of, you know, the, the rising escalation of it all. Uh, I do hope people are safe in, in going out and not everyone is fortunate enough to, to be in, you know, like California or the Bay Area. Uh, where they're having many peaceful protests. And let's be clear, like this is all also in, in the reporting, the vast majority of the protests have been peaceful. We've only been seeing the stuff on yep. the news uh, where, you know... And, and, and the news, like, yeah, their job is to sensationalize. Absolutely. Right. Well, absolutely. And, and, you know, the news, the news is doing a spectacularly uneven job of, of attributing, you know, the, somebody... somebody uh, pointed out that <clears throat> when there's police violence, newspapers almost always use passive voice, and when there's protesters throwing yeah. bricks, it's almost always active voice. Uh, so you know, it's protesters throw bricks at police. Tear gas was used against protesters, right? Right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Like, like. Well, look go, at the look at the look at the Times. Uh, look at the Times headline this morning. Yeah. Those idiots. As chaos reigns, Trump vows to make it stop. I mean, it's yeah. like. Yeah, literally really? gassed a peaceful protest to clear a path so he could show what a big, strong For man he was. For a photo opportunity. Yeah. Do you know about the fact that Fox News scheduled an interview with the rector of that church for 7 p.m. for the exact time of the photo op so that he'd be off-site and occupied? Wow. Uh, I came across that on my Twitter feed. I did not double-check it, but, I, uh, you know. That seems right. Uh, that reads. So, that is, yeah, it does scan. However, I, I want to say I say that without attribution, and I did not go look for a source uh, that just made that fit my worldview. Uh, so I could be totally wrong, and it could be a bald faced lie. Well, it's I mean, good, but but it's worth going out and looking at re reporters and journalists who are sharing videos of things that have absolutely. happened. Absolutely, you know, like, absolutely. It, it's it's their easy. direct experience is out there to see. Yeah, if if you watch. And and I know that there are going to be some people in the comments saying fake news, fake news, fake news. But when one person is telling you that the, everything everybody else says is a lie and everybody else says, hey, this is the truth. And we're talking about people who've been journalists and reporters at publications for 20 years. You, you, you have to start, you know, count count the people saying things on either side. Um, I mean, yeah. I, I think you just went to the, the point of all is that it's so difficult in a human nature for us to change our worldview right to yeah. to even to acknowledge it isn't to actually change it right even what we're doing right now by talking yeah. about it doesn't mean that we're actually the the action will 
will stand for itself in the days and weeks and years to come. And hopefully we can live up to that as well. Um, but hopefully this is, this is our you know, first step in this moment to talk about it. But that's at the heart of it all is that when you're telling someone that Black Lives Matter, you know, you're also asking someone who maybe doesn't subscribe to that to change their whole worldview and the things that they accept. And it can be, it's scary, right? It's like people shrink into these, you know, into these insecure states, which we all do, um, because we don't want our lives to change because yeah. we haven't had to go through those things. And yeah. like the optimistic thing is that like, no one's asking one person like you out there, listener who, you know, who isn't black, uh, it's not gonna, no one's gonna like take away your livelihood. And if we all come together and acknowledge and share the burden of the fact of this injustice that's been going on for hundreds of years, right? It's not that difficult as a whole for us as a society to change, right? Um, and yet people take it very personally. Well, it's, well, they, it's hard to hear you have, pr you're privileged when you're f fighting your ass off to get ahead and to get something for your family. And, and you know, the, the, it doesn't seem like much of a privilege, but the privilege to not risk being killed when you roll through a stop sign is a pretty big privilege, you know, in, in my book. Well, and people keep thinking that privilege means that they have a leg up. Right. So like Scalzi's wonderful analogy that white privilege doesn't mean that you get to win automatically. It just means that you get to play this game on the easy setting. But what that also means is that people of color are playing a vastly more difficult game than you are playing. The settings on their game will look, would look completely alien to you because you don't live in the same space that they do. You, and, and the easy literally setting doesn't always country. feel easy. Yeah. Right. And no, nope, for most not people, at all. it doesn't. Everyone's uh, people are struggling. Absolutely. Especially well, in the time of pandemic. everybody suffers. That's the first noble truth. Everybody suffers. Obviously, everybody does. Nobody escapes from that. And that suffering is real. Yeah. And some people suffer more. Uh, yeah. Uh, um, somebody pointed out on Twitter the other night that America has been so racist for so long that when you attack racism, a lot of people feel like you're attacking America. Yeah. I was like, yeah, that, yeah. Explains you know, that's character. another way of saying when you're in the dominant power structure, <laughs> equality feels like oppression, right? These are, these are both the same thing. Yeah. 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 Um, Next steps. <laughs> yeah. Next I mean, there's steps. so many things. Donate. Yes. Donate, educate yourself, vote, talk to your friends. Uh, and like really white people, it's incumbent on you to talk to your other white friends about this. Don't, con don't go conscripting your black friends to tell you how to fix this situation. Yeah. That's not their job to teach you how to do that. And if you think we're wrong, right? And I'm, I'm sure there are some listeners out there who don't agree. And if you don't agree and you've listened your way through the entire podcast, thank you, right? Like at least you just didn't turn it off. You know, then you're the person that we want to have a conversation with, right? You're not just the Look, troll. Yeah, I, a few, I'm not going to listen, but we do want to have a conversation. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. Look, I, I'm, I try to assume that all of us, even when we vastly disagree, that for the most part, we are all trying to do the same thing, protect our families and our friends and our loved ones and our communities and afford the best life for each of those groups. Uh, that is certainly what informs my politics, uh, which is, you know, which is why I value inclusivity uh, and equal, equanimity. Uh, I think of a town with a hundred people in it and how they take care of each other. And that is the value that I ascribe to even a place as big as the United States. Um, I, 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 it, I, the only way we're going to get through this is by listening to each other, right? Like to really understand what another person's experience is instead of just deny, 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 uh, and the status quo. Listen and believe. 
and you know, as tested, you know, if you are here to learn about, you know, different makers and maker culture and people doing wonderful things in this space, you know, share those things from people who are not represented, right? From black makers and from black engineers and scientists. And, you know, we're going to try to do our part to amplify those voices too, but there are so many that we probably don't know of um, through our own blindness. And please share those with us so we can you know, learn about them and engage with them. Uh, on that, on that Absolutely. note, uh, Khalif Jenkins of the Spawn on Me pon- podcast uh, is, is a friend and he put together a great round table of people to talk about George Floyd and the protests and and what it's like to be black in America and and uh, it's it was a really really fantastic podcast um, that I learned a lot so I I highly recommend it. Thank you. Well, um, um, we'll include some uh, some links here in the comments below. Um, there's you know uh, we're we're we're. <laughs> Well, let's not. I, there's not much to talk about for tested this week. I think we should wrap this up. Yeah. yeah. Um, and for those of you who uh, are pissed off that we spent this podcast talking about politics, um, that's what's happening now. Uh, it's not about politics. It's about human beings, and people are being hurt out there. And uh, I, whatever you think about the situation, that needs to stop. Uh, and we need to start healing from this and uh, we considered it vital to talk about this today. I don't think there's anything else we could have talked about today. No. Um, um, yeah. And if it makes you uncomfortable, we'll maybe see. look deeper. <laughs> I mean, I think we can all be honest. It yeah. says it all, it makes us, it makes all of us uncomfortable. Yeah. Yeah. We are totally, all uncomfortable. Completely, completely. Right. Like Absolutely. you've heard the silences yeah. here. It, this is something like, we don't talk about on a regular basis, certainly not enough. Um, And especially in this time where we're isolating, like we're talking about it in this household. I know you guys are talking about it in in your own households. Um, And, you know, we're going to use this as a forum to talk about it even amongst ourselves. Um, And so thank you for listening too. I I would love it if people had resources for talking to your kids. My seven-year-old has questions that I'm not really equipped to answer and would love advice from the audience on that. Um, or, yeah. or at least places to start. Uh, and I'm, I'm yeah. going to go out and do more of my research. Um, but yeah, thank you guys. Stay safe. Stay safe, everybody. Um, Stay safe. Yeah. yeah. Oh, hey, if you're going to go out and protest, buy a pair of goggles at the hardware store. Take your safety goggles at the hardware store, please. They're shooting rubber bullets yep. and a lot of people are losing eyes. So, you know, yep. wear your safety gear. Anyway. Yeah, be, a, be a helper. Yeah.